Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear and number one, happy Valentine's Day to all of you ladies out there. And hope your husbands got your wife some really nice. Hope you uh, boyfriends got your girlfriends something really nice. And your dad's got your daughter something really nice. So I, I know you did, but I just want to make sure y'all did. I hope you have a great and wonderful Valentine's Day. Uh, Jeff said they're going to wait and do theirs tomorrow because he's so busy today. But uh, it's always Valentine's Day is always special. We still... Since our kids were little, we still get them Valentine's Day. It used to be fun. I'd get them boxes of candy because I could eat their candy too because they couldn't eat all of it. But now that they're out of the house and all, we still uh, send them. And the grandkids and all, we always have a big deal on Valentine's Day because it is a special day. And I know it's a commercial day and all, but it is a good time to let them all know how much you love them and appreciate them. Now let's move on with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. High today, 72. A low is 60, and water temperature is right at, you know, like I said yesterday, is 60 degrees, so uh, looking good there. River readings you see on the screen there. I'll, we'll get caught up tomorrow. We're going to see really what the river's going to do for the weekend, and we'll know more about it on Thursdays usually. And that's brought to us by Sand Hill Seafood. A tie, the tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, low at 609 and a high at 824. Okay, and so that... That's going to be uh, interesting there to see what's developed as far as the wind direction and all toward the weekend. And we'll, like I say, Thursday is a lot better time to give these reports on what's going to happen on the weekend. And, some, and Friday, of course, is good too, but usually Thursday you get your long range forecast because if most of y'all like me, you want to know about Thursday what you're going to be doing about the weekend. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to take our break now. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I got a few pictures to show you today, so let's get started on them. I love this little saying here because this is so true. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you now. We talk about this a lot. Wind from the west, fish bite the best. Wind from the east, fish bite the least. Wind from the north, do not go forth. Wind from the south, blows bait in their mouth. And there's a lot to be said about that on lakes around here. And this base system, and uh, my dad always talked about that. What, that goes way back. That's an old timer saying, and a lot of truth. Now there are other variables. It means that means a lot, but in, in general, you can always count on those kind of things. But I, I just wanted to show it to you, and, and uh, I, we'll talk about it some more. Here's an old buddy of mine, and I do mean an old buddy of mine. This is Alan Shepard. This is a 55-pound blue cat. Remember, I showed you a picture yesterday. Alan Shepard, uh, special to me, goes back to when we were teenagers. Alan grew up over in Greensboro in West Gaston, old farmland over there, and uh, had his family hunted. And he, he and my brother and I did a lot of hunting when we were back in our, in our 20s, and then on through, uh, on through our 40s and all. We hunted a lot, a lot of dog hunting on Robert Brent, and his dad hunted, with my dad, and we had a hunting party, dog hunting in that area, around the old gas line, and we had many, many fine races and some fine fellowship with our brothers and cousins and family and friends. So I uh, see Alan, Alan is a true outdoorsman. He's one of the old school outdoorsmen and he can fish and he can hunt. And you see a 55 pound blue cat, I guarantee you where it came from. It came out of Apalachico River. He wants to have him where, but I know about where, where he got it. And uh, good fisherman, good job, Alan Shepard. This is interesting, Kenny Moore. This is uh, one of last year's shed hunting, one of last year's shed uh, hunting bucks. He's not a big scorer, but a nice deer. But look how close the, uh, the tines are up top. And he's going to start looking for sheds in about three weeks. So that, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, you know, this is a, these are still together like that. But anyway, shed hunting will be popular pretty soon. Last week I had Paul Winterman on. And somebody, uh, he got photobombed on this picture. His, butt, his big butt walked out between the camera and his car. Of course, I know that was planned. I, I imagine he's right there around Cage Cove when that picture was taken. I just thought that was neat. You don't usually get a deer to photobomb your pics like that. So anyway, there's a couple of pics I wanted to show you. We'll talk about all this this rainy weather we have, and you know, it's good if you if you recall now, February is usually the wettest month of the year. As outdoorsmen, we just get muddy in February. And there's always some benefits uh, to this February rain. And of course, you know, we're on the verge of spring, on the early spring. We're not there yet, but we're on the verge of it. But one thing is here local here in the Panhandle, all that rain really fills in the Sand Hill Ponds. And I know a lot of y'all live up there, and, 
every year we get pictures of sand hills going down and then that rain fills them back up and it's sort of a movement. So I know that is really good for everybody to get those sand hill ponds filled up and, and you know, the irrigation ponds throughout, you know, the old days the irrigation pond was a big deal for farmers to get that filled up. So that's, that's important too. Also, the, the rivers itself, the sloughs and all, that water is washing that mud down, and, and it really is good for the fish because it's washing bait, washing worms and all, you know, swift water washing those worms in the slough out from the ground. And a lot of things, a lot of that cleansing effect is cleaning some of that swampy area out, and yet the slough itself is getting muddy, but it's getting food sources in there from the surrounding land. So it's really a neat thing, uh, the, all the rain we have. I know. Uh, it is aggravating at time, but it's really some good blessings. It sort of cleanses the, you know, we had the end of the winter and we still got old pollen and all around. So those heavy rains we get, and they were heavy, uh, they really did a cleansing effect. So it affects the, the ponds, it affects the sloughs, which affects the big river, and you know, everything's muddy. Now let's look at the base system. The base system is going to be muddy. The Deer Point Dam, the uh, Apalachicola base system is going to be muddy. The Choctahatchee River system, where the river comes out into the base system, all that is muddy, plus a little feed of creeks. creeks. There, all, all that mud is coming out. But again, that's part of the cycle. That's part of the uh, cycle of the bait coming into the bay system. The muddy, you know, a lot of times those fish will feed around that mud and all in, in the bottom because it's got more strong current. So it's pushing up the, the uh, fish and the bait from the bottom there. So all of that is really important. So it's a good time of the year for this to happen. Uh, the early spring rains and, and the late February rains really are beneficial to, to us in a, in a huge way. So I always be thankful of these rains. And always, you know, like I say yesterday, be careful in them too. Now, talk about hiking. February is also the month of the year to go, go hiking in. And they're all kind of, I talk about on a regular basis about the, the joy of getting outdoors. And hiking is one of the best ways you can get outdoors. And we're blessed here in the south, and especially here in Florida, of all the hiking trails. And I'll, I've got a map. I'm going to show you some different hiking trails. But let's go ahead and take our break now, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. One of the reasons February is such a great month for hiking, you know, it is the official month of hiking in the, in the south. And one of the big reasons, of course, is not very many bugs out. So it's really, really safe as far as you're getting bit by all kinds of bugs. So it's just a great time. It's not too hot out there. You know, spring hadn't really st started off. So anyway, I, you know, I've always loved to go walking in the woods. You call it hiking or walking in the woods or whatever. It's just a lot of fun. I would encourage you to do it. You don't have to go on an official trail to do it. If you have some old property or something or a friend's old property, just walk through there and all, look at the trees and walking. But I, I decided instead of doing it all at one time, I'm going to do one section at a time uh, throughout the next couple of days. So this, this first section I'm going to do is start off in a western viewing area over there on the Choctahatchee Bay system and over there you can see this map right here and you can go to these trail systems and all and find these spots. But okay, here's a map right here, just some really good spots and it, I move them over one at a time. Top left hand corner, the Choctahatchee Bay Area Trail. It's that Top Sail Hill at the Preserve State Park. That Top Sail Hill is a special place. Uh, and then the loop, they have a loop where you just loop around and come back to it. But that's a, that's a easy, it's got them ranked of easy to walk and whatever. And then move on, keep moving on this way toward uh, going from west to east. The Longleaf Greenway in Santa Rosa Beach. You can see that's a moderate through the woods and all. A really nice, nice area there. And then the Eastern Lake Yellow Trail is over in Point Washington State Forest, and it's an easy loop there too. So we've uh, we've gotten to the point where we've got some really good marked trails and. We'll get into Pine Log Forest and all tomorrow, but over in the western end of the viewing area, some really good trails to walk right through there and all. So uh, just be aware of that, and if you'll get opportunity to get out in the woods and do some walking around and take some folks with you and all. All right, now, uh, let's go into fishing down at the, at the Cape. I do a lot. This is, I'm fishing now with my, on this video here with my friend and neighbor, Dr. John Wolfington, and he's from uh, way down there in, in uh, right outside of Ocala, and uh, he, he loves coming up this way from Palatka, if you know where that is, which is outside of uh, Ocala. And he loves coming over here fishing, and he's a good guy, fun to fish with. So this little video is here. We're right there. We didn't, we didn't move. We, we put in right there at, at the state park there and, at, and uh, moved in one spot and just anchored and just started fishing, and we caught all kind of fish. So uh, I think you'll enjoy this video here. All right, folks, getting ready to go fishing here in the Cape. I'm going fishing with my neighbor over here, Dr. John Wolfenden. And, and good to see you again. Yes, sir. Uh, now, you're originally from Palatka. 
been a doctor of a Palatka for a long time. Correct. And uh, we, we've been talking about going fishing now for a couple of years, but we finally narrowed it down. Right. What's our, what's our game plan? What are we going to try to do? We're going to catch uh, 5 o'clock redfish over in uh, Eagle Harbor in, in St. Joe Bay. So it's 5 o'clock somewhere, so let's go. Let's go give it a try. All right. All right. Now, John, what about the name Bawana? Bawana? Well, how do we get a name for the boat? Well, my, my brother-in-law gave me that name because he's a city slicker and I'm a redneck and I taught him a little bit about how to fish so he thought I was sort of like Tarzan. That's where <laughs> Buana comes from. You watch Tarzan when you were a kid. All right. Get down here at Eagle Harbor. It looks beautiful out there. All right, Dr. John. We've been here, what, five, min five minutes? He's bringing one in. A red fish. Nice a red little, fish. nice little redfish. Redfish. That's okay. I started it off there. There you go. Good job. All right. Pretty red. Right here in Eagle Harbor. Let go of my hook. Thank you. There he is. Good job. Go back to your mama. There you go. Look at my first fish. That's not fair. You get a red fish and look what I get, Doc. <laughs> well, we can't keep either one. No, I don't want to keep this one, but he put on a show now. He did, he did some good, good tail walking. All right, John. Get your head up. Right. No little red fish. We don't want little red fish. We're catching some nice little red fish. We want big red fish. All right. Here it comes. That ain't no, is that a, that's a redfish. That is it, folks. Yeah, I don't know that if you can see it. That is a big redfish. That is a that's huge a redfish out there. Now, I got uh, this. That's the same one that was swimming around, isn't this it? This one right here. Where'd, Where'd he go? He went over, he went over that way. There's a huge redfish right over there. I don't know if I rig. We're not rigged. I don't. He just keep going. If we caught him. What you got there, Doc? Uh, no, <laughs> you want you want us to edit that one? <laughs> All right, folks. Got another red here. Another little one, but a pretty one. Okay. I'm turning my. Nice. Can we get him out? Doctor, do you have surgeon's hands? I do. <laughs> what kind of doctor were you? Uh, pelvic reconstruction. Pelvic reconstruction. Well, are you now retired or are you still? Uh, I've been retired. I'm too old to <laughs> be doing that. Have you ever treated anybody falling out of a tree stand? <laughs> no. <laughs> Got another one. Yeah, he's short. Jump. <laughs> Pretty trout. I don't know. He might measure. He might measure. He's a little bigger than that. Ah, uh, you doing good, Doc. John, what do you think I got on, buddy? You got a nice redfish there, my man. Well, he's out there, folks. He's been. We've had him hooked about a good five minutes. You can see him out there, right to the right of the sun rays. I'm just trying to get. Nice redfish. We may or may not get him, but we, he's been on. He's giving us a good fight. Yeah, he's coming around now where you're going to see him. I'm going to have to put the camera down real okay, folks, we're talking about a variety of fish. Aren't you a little like the doctor just pulled in? Look at that little grouper. <laughs> and that's what, look at that. He just had him hooked in it. Beautiful. So what kind of grouper is that? That would be a, a black grouper. Black and they're growing grouper. up and uh, they'll start here in the bay and work their way on out in deeper water. We catch a lot of them a little smaller than that. Isn't yeah. It? He'd be a nice little fillet. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, go right. ahead now. What? finally got a fish in the now boat. I've got a couple of them. Look, let this. three or four go. Check, check this out, folks. <laughs> look at this mackerel. That is a that is a nice mackerel right there. It's amazing. Look at those a, teeth. He's along in my arm. Look at that. Goodness one. gracious. And we fought him a while now. It's amazing those teeth didn't cut that. And that's a short shank hook. He will bite you. He will bite you. Yes, he will. He ain't gonna bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this is it's amazing. It's a variety of fish, John, we've caught out of here. That is one spot. Hmm. 
Open up, dude. That's just like you operate on those uh, hip replacements and all. Yeah. Oh, got him out. Hold him up there. Nice fish. All right, I'm proud of that one. I got to get a helmet cam. I couldn't. I was scared to film while I was catching them because uh, they did it a while ago. We lost that big redfish. All right. Can you remember, uh, can we rehash about how many different fish we have caught, about different varieties? What all have we caught now? We caught ladyfish, we caught two groupers, we caught trout, speckled trout, we caught a big Spanish mackerel, we caught three or four small redfish, red and Winston had two really nice big <laughs> redfish break off. Yes. So it, he had his drag set too tight. Nah. <laughs> We've well, had a great afternoon, but I sure have enjoyed this trip. Uh, doesn't get any better than this. It is beautiful out here. All right, folks, Panhandle Outdoors. Dr. John Wolfenden. I'm Winston Chester. Wrapping up our next our fishing trip. We'll see you next time on Panhandle Outdoors. All right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that video. That's a typical case of uh, me trying to film and fish, and it's just really hard to do. And uh, those two big redfish I lost, I was trying to hold a camera and all that, and he was trying to scramble around. So he's a fun guy to fish with, very enjoyable. And you can see the variety of fish you can catch in that one that little cove. That's Eagle, that's Eagle Harbor right in that area we're fishing. So uh, good luck if you get down there and all. I'd be glad to show you some of the spots where we're at and uh, put an X on the map. We still got our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers down in Port St. Joe, 1106 to 106, right in the middle of the day, and tonight 1129 to 129. I don't know many people getting outdoors at night, doing much stuff outdoors, but we're right on the verge of those squid coming in a downtown marina and different other places too. So squid fishing is right around the corner too, so that'll be some good night fishing, and let me know when some of y'all start doing it. Now let's, we'll go from fishing now, let's go over to duck hunting. Duck season's wrapping up and it's, and I love to, you know, each uh, season I like to keep, get on Ducks Unlimited and check that migration map. That's just fascinating to me. And as you, if you hear me talk, I don't duck hunt much anymore, but I used to just have a passion for it, but I still love to see it. So this is our last check up on the, this year's hunt and all. And I looked at the map last night. I'm gonna blow it up on you and you can get an app to this. So you can just really go online and, uh, and get on, uh, get on there, uh, just look up Ducks Unlimited Migration Map. So I'm gonna check one over, I'm gonna check two of them. This one over here, uh, let's check over here in Louisiana. And this is, uh, that's Pearl River. So I'm gonna, okay, that's Pearl River there. But I wanna check, uh, there's one over here in Lafayette, because I've been to, we fished over there uh, when it was Season of Hope with Michael and those guys, and we had a good time. And I'm gonna view the report from in South Louisiana, these guys are serious. And what this is, guy, this is a Sunday now, and basically uh, declining numbers. Okay, basically what he's talking about: the geese is on the move from south to north. And then on uh, that was on su Sunday. Then on Saturday, he filed a report: wood ducks uh, in the boxes in the trees, and model ducks in ponds. So fog had most of them. So anyway, he got the declining numbers right there. So then uh, I decided I want to look at one. Let's look at one up here. I just, for some reason, pulled this one out up in Indiana. You go north, okay, in Indiana. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, it's going to be right up here because I thought this was interesting when I read it last night because he's doing, let me see, this might be it right here. Okay, Jeffersonville, Indiana. That's off the Ohio River, and I want to view the report on that. And I thought this is really, this sort of sums it up. This is Sunday. Comments, this is a guy uh, opening, okay, only a few local birds, okay. And his comment, I love this. That's a wrap for us in Indiana, that's a wrap for us Indiana boys. Not a banner year by any means, but still had uh, lots of fun 
in the blind with the McDaniel brothers and all. But anyway, that's sort of a wrap uh, up in Indiana. It's a wrap for all of duck season throughout. So it's neat to see what your fellow duck hunters are doing and what kind of season they had and, and uh, as far as migration and all this. So uh, Ducks Unlimited is a great organization and, and they they right now got a lot of things tied together. And I don't know the local folks that do a Duck Unlimited banquet because I've never been invited, but I do know it's a good organization and they do a lot of good things, okay? now. I've only, the next thing I want to talk about was, and I'm not going to have enough time to finish it, so let's just talk about it off the cuff right here, and I'll talk about it more in detail tomorrow. I've got some guests coming in uh, later on this week and some more good video. I was able to get down to East Point, and I actually got some video on the East Point Bridge that I'm always talking about uh, fishing off the East Point Bridge, and, and you'll see in the video, it's a, long, it's a lot longer out there than it used to be, so it was, on, it was last Friday and they were really windy and all, so not many people were fishing. In fact, not anybody was fishing. Uh, there was one guy fishing from, uh, he was from uh, Pennsylvania who was down here fishing. But uh, right now is a good time to go fishing off the bridges now for sheephead. And I promise you, that was a Friday. A lot of folks are working, so probably this past Saturday and Sunday there, there were some people fishing for sheephead. So be aware of that. Also, uh, on the video too, the the area that you fish in, you got. We'll talk about the tide chart. We'll talk about this Friday too, but what the tide is doing, and and the Chattahoochee River Bridge is is uh, uh, not the Chattahoochee River, Chattahoochee Bay Bridge is a good place to catch sheephead too. And we'll talk about that more. Uh, and the best bait again is, is a peel shrimp. If you can get it, from fiddler crab will catch more, but it's hard to find the fiddler crabs now. Check your local bait shop. And again, just in fishing in general, this time of year, you want to try to use as much live bait as you can, uh, especially with all this rain we've had. So shrimp's going to be good this weekend, fishing if I find some good live shrimp. And most of our bait shops have those, okay? I don't have time to get into uh, the eating the wild game. We'll talk about that later. So as always, I want to tell you how much we appreciate you watching Panhandle Outdoors. And I'll again, say happy Valentine's Day to all of you ladies out there. Hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, if... Uh, if your husband got you something, then give him a big old uh, kiss, okay? Y'all have a great day. Do something in the outdoors. It's fun. I always do something good for your fellow man. And enjoy the great outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.